Unfortunately, we still cannot treat all cancer patients. But with new research, we will certainly get a step closer. What is cancer? This is the University of the Netherlands. Cancer is one of the most common diseases in the world. Even though we've come far in treating some cancers, we still have a long way to go to develop effective cancer therapies for the majority of patients. In this lecture, I will cover the basics of what cancer is, how it's treated right now, and how we may treat it in the future, with a specific focus on how we can make use of our immune system to develop cancer therapies. Cancer arises from the misbehavior of our own cells. But before we understand how cells misbehave, let's take a brief look at how they usually do. Our bodies are made up of trillions of cells. Together, they form a structure and have very well-defined and specialized functions that include the absorption of nutrients, contraction of muscles, or disposal of waste products. They also contain our DNA, the molecule that carries the genetic information across generations. One very important characteristic of cells is that they can make copies of themselves through cell division. The ability of cells to divide is very important to renew or repair tissues, and we can see evidence for cell division when a wound is repaired or when hair grows. In cancer cells, there is something wrong with the DNA, a genetic alteration. They lose their sense of belonging in the body and don't follow instructions from the healthy cells around them anymore. Therefore, they become relatively independent from what is around them. As a result of this, they're able to divide uncontrollably at a faster pace than normal cells and can also move around the body. This becomes a problem when they start competing with healthy cells for things like nutrients. Cancer cells may also end up growing at an organ that is essential for our body to survive. And that is eventually why a patient would die of cancer. Faults in the genetic code of cells can have different causes. They may be inherited, passing across generations, but actually most cancers develop by chance, sporadically, although certain behaviors and exposures influence the risk of cancer development. Imagine you need to copy a book with three billion words by hand. How likely is it you would make no mistakes at all? Not very likely, right? The same goes for cells. Every time a cell divides, it has to make an exact copy of the DNA from the previous cell. And every time, a small mistake can be made. This mistake accumulates as cells keep dividing, and when this happens often enough, you can get malignant transformation of healthy cells to cancer cells. And that brings me to the biggest risk factor for cancer, aging. When you live long enough, your cells will have divided so many times that enough mistakes have been made for a cell to misbehave. So what about common causes for cancer that are known to us, like smoking and exposure to sunlight? Well, they play a role too. These external factors damage the DNA of cells and this increases the rate at which mistakes accumulate in your body. And again, the older you get, the more damage your body will be exposed to. However, not every mistake results in cancer. It's actually a matter of probability. Our DNA is really big, and the genes that are actually important for cancer development, where a mutation would have serious consequences, compose only a small part of the DNA. So the likelihood that a mutation actually affects a gene that would promote cancer is small. Next to that, our cells have mechanisms to protect us. For example, DNA repair mechanisms. We have proteins in our cells that can recognize damage to the DNA and repair it. Also, when a cell starts misbehaving, there are other mechanisms built in it that they can push a cell to, let's say, commit suicide when something is going very wrong. Let's call this a SOS mechanisms of cells. So in order for someone to actually develop cancer, a lot of things have to go wrong. Your cells need to accumulate enough mistakes, and something probably needs to be wrong with your DNA repair mechanisms and SOS mechanisms. So if you think of it, from a probabilistic point of view, it's not so easy for a cell to become cancerous. Nonetheless, we live so long and our cells divide so many times that at some point it is inevitable. We still cannot treat all cancers, but there are different treatments available. You may be most familiar with chemotherapy and radiotherapy. 
Perhaps you've also heard about immunotherapy. It's a very hot topic nowadays. Today I will explain a number of treatments that are available for cancer patients. Chemotherapy and radiotherapy are the most classical treatments, but the problem is they aren't very specific. And what do I mean by that? They work by inducing damage in cells, but the problem is that they do not just affect cancer cells, but all cells in the body. Chemotherapy is a medicine that can be administered via pills or intravenously and spreads throughout the entire body through circulation. Chemotherapies provoke damage in the DNA during cell division. And the principle is that cancer cells divide more often than normal cells, so in theory they would be more sensitive to the damage induced by chemotherapy. And cancer cells often have problems with mechanisms to repair that damage. This principle works in some cancers, but as you are aware, toxicity is a common side effect of these treatments. Cancer cells are not the only cells in the body that divide rapidly. Cells at your skin, intestine, bone marrow also undergo rapid division and are affected by these treatments, resulting in side effects like intestinal complaints, suppression of our immune system, and for instance, hair loss. Chemotherapy can be very efficient in certain malignant tumors, but if you think of it, it is a very harsh way to treat one's disease. With radiotherapy, high doses of radiation are directed to a specific part of the body where a cancer is located. The radiation damages the cancer cells to a point where they don't divide anymore and die. It has the advantage that it can be directed to a tumor, but there are still issues. For instance, if you have a lung cancer that is close to the heart, the radiotherapy is toxic to the heart. And this is because it makes use of radiation which can cross through different layers of tissue. Or you have to treat a brain tumor with radiotherapy, it will also affect the surrounding normal brain tissue. Also, radiotherapy needs to be directed to a specific place in the body. It cannot treat small groups of cancer cells that are spread throughout the body. In this case, chemotherapy will be needed. Both chemotherapy and radiotherapy can be effective, but have their respective downsides that mainly have to do with not being able to specifically target cancer cells. More than a decade ago, a big development regarding specificity of cancer treatments took place, the development of targeted therapies. Targeted therapies rely on drugs that target proteins which are more abundant on cancer cells as compared to healthy cells. Or they target proteins that have a very specific structure on cancer cells as a result, for instance, of a mutation. In this case, drugs can be designed as if they were keys to fit specific keyholes. The proteins targeted at cancer cells are often responsible for providing signals that stimulate cancer cell division and survival. So when you block them, cancer cells cannot survive anymore. Unfortunately, almost always after some time, resistance develops to these treatments, whereas cancer cells are not sensitive anymore to the drugs that are being used. In the last 10 years, we have seen a huge breakthrough in cancer treatment with the development of new cancer immunotherapies. The most successful form of cancer immunotherapy nowadays makes use of T-cells. T-cells are a type of immune cell in our body that is moving through the body and checking if everything is normal with our cells. If cells have a different proteins in them that, for instance, come from a virus or bacteria, or even if they have an abnormal mutated protein like you see in cancer cells, T-cells can recognize these alterations and kill the target cells. In case of an infection, you get a very effective immune response carried out by T-cells that can last from a couple of days to a couple of weeks. And this is the normal time period for T-cells to act. After a short period of time, T-cells receive signals telling them they should stop being active after the infection has been resolved. After all, you're not constantly having an inflammatory response that prolongs indefinitely just because you have an infection. So the immune system is programmed in a way that you initiate an immune response, but there is a point where it must stop. What is done with the most recent type of cancer immunotherapy is to use antibodies that block signals that tell T cells to slow down. In that manner, we can reactivate the T cells or prolong their activity so that your immune system keeps fighting the cancer. In a way, we're helping the body to keep fighting for itself. This treatment really is a breakthrough. 
In some patients with advanced melanoma or lung cancer, for instance, it actually led to complete cures, while before, it was very difficult to get such a result from a cancer treatment. Unfortunately, this approach doesn't work for all patients or cancer types, but we keep researching new forms of making use of our immune system to treat cancer. There's still quite some challenges to be addressed so that we can expand the benefit of immunotherapy to more cancer patients. One of them being that tumor cells are still very much alike our own cells. So often it's not so easy for the immune system to recognize cancer cells. Or in other words, the immune system was not made to attack our own cells. And it can therefore be difficult to instruct it to target cells that look very much alike healthy cells. That's why cancer immunotherapies can be largely effective in tumors like melanomas and lung cancer, which have much more alterations to the cells because of the constant damage to the DNA that has been produced by sun exposure or smoking. Thus, what can we do with cancers that do not carry enough alterations so that the immune system can recognize and eliminate them? This has been one of the focuses of our research. What we described is that even in cancers that did not acquire so many alterations through mutations, those patients do have T cells that can be specifically activated against cancer cells. And this is great news because it means that one way or another, these patients will be able to benefit from immunotherapy. The question is, how do we make use of those T cells? Options include a vaccination-like approach where we tell the immune system to focus on proteins that differ between cancer cells and healthy cells. And at the same time, a danger signal is provided so that the immune system is told that something is wrong in the body and that it should act fast. An efficient way to produce a cancer vaccine is to make use of mRNA-based vaccines like the ones that were developed for fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. Another approach is to be able to isolate the T cells with anti-cancer properties from patients, expand them to very large numbers in the lab, and give them back to the patients so that at least for a while, the majority of T cells that a patient has are T cells that can fight off the cancer. The challenge here is, how do we find out what makes these cancer-specific T cells different so that we can take them out of a patient's body? This is another very important line of our research. Finally, we're also very interested in understanding the potential of other immune cells, different from T cells, for their use in cancer therapies. There are a number of types of immune cells in our body that we know very little about, and which might hold the key for new treatments. In my group, we apply a variety of advanced technologies to understand less studied immune cells and determine their potential as new therapeutic agents. So, circling back to our main question, what is cancer? Cancers arise when our cells make mistakes during cell division. If enough mistakes are made, this can become dangerous. For a long time, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and targeted drugs were the go-to therapies. But as you are aware, they cannot treat all cancer patients. Immunotherapies look very promising as an effective therapeutic strategies. Many labs around the world are working to explore the full potential of immunotherapeutic approaches for the treatment of cancer. Slowly, but steadily, I expect that new tools will be added to the cancer immunotherapy toolbox, which will translate to an increased number of cancer patients being treated by immunotherapy.